Carolyn and Skullthammer had a handy lead at the overnight stop, with the tough conditions taking a heavy toll with only 17 of the 71 starters on the survivors list. A great performance on the 200 Yamaha saw Richard Manning in second place amongst the bikers, with Yuri Himmen also in the top five. Tough day of racing comes the time to relax in front of the friendly campfire, with no shortage of yarns there for the telly. This is part of the lure of off-road racing, but most could do without the inevitable pre-dawn wake-up calls. Vux Carolyn and Kenny Skolthammer led away the field, but just 10 kilometers from Taylor's Pan is a now infamous sand dune waiting to provide competitors with an early problem. The sand dune is a favourite with spectators who love to be a part of the fun and games. For the competitors, it's often no joking matter, although for second place Klaus Degener and Derek Punoy, it was a piece of cake. <laughs> Old friends often meet once a year at the sand dune, and there is an air of expectancy as vehicles arrive to tackle a short stretch of the route that can put pay to many a competitor's race prospects. There were also no problems for third-placed Alfred von Furen and Piet Pelzer in the Toyota Hilux. By the time Hannah Scrobler and Pete Swanepoel arrived on the scene at a rapid rate of knots in the Nissan One Tonner, they had been reduced to a two-wheel drive and decided on a boldness, be my friend policy. It worked, but others were not so fortunate. Here comes Wolf Peter Fumfei. And here comes Wolf Peter Fumfei again. yet for Mr. Fumfai. It's Mr. Fumfai again, Mom. There were no fun and games at the sand dune for the bikers, with Patrick Andrews still out in the lead. But all was not well with the Lesotho rider. Andrews arrived at a checkpoint where it was clear there was a problem with the Lesotho office equipment KTM. There were plenty of onlookers as Andrews consulted with team manager Ralph Pitchford and team owner Butch Hirsch. And there was frantic activity around the KTM. With the earlier casualty Eric Dalton looking on, Andrews attempted to get underway again. KTM's gearbox had seized. It was a no-go situation and the disgusted rider made his feelings clear. With Andrews out of the running, Richard Manning found himself out in the lead on Winston Yamaha, and there was a prospect of history in the making. No 200-class machine had ever won the Toyota 1000 Desert Race, and Manning's service crew were quick to let him know that Andrews was now a frustrated onlooker. Consistent ride had moved Kevin Tebbett into second place on the Sun City Honda, with an anxious Yuri Himmen Sr. waiting for Yuri Jr., who was still going strong, only to retire later with engine trouble. At the Dinapen service point, there was more drama. 
What temperature can I run this thing at, Rich? What temperature? Hi? Huh? One temperature. No, I mean this this thing here. Yeah, the oil temperature. Oh, What's 250? 250. Is that maximum? 250. That's what it's running. It's running on 250. Yeah, but there was no oil in there, Rich. Is that George Weefold? Just blow it anyway from underneath if you yeah, can, Rich. Leaders Bugs Carolyn and Kenny Skullhammer reported in with overheating problems, thought to be caused by grass seed clogging up the cooling systems or by a burnt piston. The pair got going again, but were finally forced to retire 150 kilometers from the finish. This put Klaus Degener and Derek Pinoy back in the lead, and they weren't going to let minor details like closed gates halt their progress. Any vantage point will do for spectators along the route. They had a grandstand view of Richard Manning now firmly entrenched in the bike lead on the Winston Yamaha in full cry. Alfred von Fieren and Piet Pelzer were still having a trouble-free run in the four-cylinder Toyota Hilux and had moved into second place. Local knowledge comes in handy and Freiburg dentist Henry Kirstein and Dries de Klerk were third on the road and leading class six in the Nissan Safari 4x4. Swaziland rider Kevin Dupont was leading the 250 class on the Truck Africa KTM. Dupont was third on the road at this stage but had to settle for fourth place at the finish. There was also a trouble-free run for Greg Weevil and Warren Clarson. The pair came home third overall for the best result to date in off-road racing. One of the best contests in the race was in Class 3, where Dani and Haas van Ameva, in a two-wheel drive Toyota Hilux, fought a running battle throughout the event with Theo Kutsia and Ian Wedderburn in the American-built Chev. Honours in a close duel finally went to the van Amervas. Back at the finish, and a huge crowd was waiting for the winners, with Klaus Degener and Derek Pinoy providing a late flourish as they came home 28 minutes ahead of Alfred van Furen and Piet Pelzer. For Degener, so often the bridesmaid on previous Toyota 1000 desert races, it was a moment of sweet triumph. It's incredible after working so hard, after so many disappointments in um, racing, particularly off-road racing, coming second so many times, third. To actually win the Toyota 1000 now is, is, I still can't, it hasn't sunk in, it's fantastic, it's the most incredible feeling. Um, and I'd like to thank my co-driver Derek Pinoy, who actually drove 100 k's as well today, and uh, without him it wouldn't have been possible. A well-deserved triumph for Klaus Degener and Derek Pinoy. With only 10 cars making it to the finish in one of the toughest Toyota 1000 desert races yet. History was made when Richard Manning took the bike honours after a superb performance and became the first rider to win the Toyota 1000 desert race on a 200cc machine. It's much too fast, you know. I thought the 500s would catch us. But I just, I just went full out from this morning. While Manning was most definitely the man of the moment, five different manufacturers were all featured in the top ten finishers.